the frame in that shot? You are not. Great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll go over them generally, and then Thanks. I've got like a long list of some cool camera features we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, and Mark knows all the technical background of all of them. So just if you just ask questions whenever, I'm sure we can go deeper on whatever you want to go deep on. Cool. Sounds great. Okay. So I've got uh, three phones laid out here. Um, and so we have two sizes uh, and three colors, which are the uh, just black, clearly white, and uh, not pink are the three colors this year. And the wonderful thing about them is it's the same feature setup on all three of them. So it's choose whichever one fits in your hand, and that's all you have to worry about. So Pixel 3 is the next generation of trying to build the hardware and the software together. And that, that combination of, of software that knows what the hardware is at a very deep level, and really building a software package and a hardware package together. So if you look at low light performance, uh, dynamic range, just sheer noise and detail, it's, it's a really incredible camera. And a lot of that is thanks to the computational photography that we've put into it. So, uh, what we've got in here are uh, a rear 12 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and uh, dual pixel for autofocus. And then on the front, we actually have two, two cameras on the front now. So there's one camera that's a, that's a normal selfie field of view, and then a, a, a group selfie cam, which you can use to get even more of what's in front of you or what's behind you. So this is really meant for uh, more people, more context. You don't have to have a, a selfie stick anymore. Nice. Uh, and we've calculated out to see kind of how much you actually get in the frame. You're getting 184% more area using the wide field of view selfie camera than you are than you would if you were using another smartphone. So we know that a photographer to try and even out the light might take a silver dish or a reflector and put it to capture the light and reflect onto someone's face. Uh, we've done that computationally. So the same way that we do portraits, which lets you sort of know the outline of a human being, we use that on every photo with a face in it, and then we selectively raise the exposure on the person and their face. Mm -hmm. And so you get this sort of uh, lively glow that normally you'd have to have equipment for, and we can do that all computationally. And that's why you see such an even range of tones, why everyone's face is properly exposed, kind of regardless of what their skin tone is, uh, and you can still capture all the highlights in the background. Uh, Night Sight is really designed for the scenes when you wouldn't even pull out your camera anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you just want a quick snapshot, you can always rely on uh, the default mode, and that takes better low-light pictures than it has in Pixel 1 or 2. If you're in one of those conditions when you would not have taken out your camera at all, right? maybe the, there's a street light 40 feet away, or maybe you're, you're hiking and it's, it's 30 minutes past sunset and you, you still want to capture a, a landscape, a beautiful landscape shot, open up the camera, switch into Night Sight, uh, and then, and then you get a little bit of shutter delay, but for the shutter delay, you get pictures that, uh, you know, before night sight might look like this. And that's what you get out of night sight. That's the difference. So again, this is now positive shutter lag, meaning it's happening mm -hmm. after you press the shutter, and the total capture time could be four, five seconds. One of the other things uh, we did, when you're in very, very low light, it's very hard to figure out what color the photo should be. Um, so we've actually uh, used machine learning to analyze the picture itself and try to determine what the right true-to-life colors are. And that's another, another really interesting innovation that we have in Night Sight. Oh. Another way to say that is it's a learning-based white balancer that is specific to Night Sight mode. With oh. Pixel 3, we're introducing raw capture in the camera application. Uh, so if you open up the camera now, you can go into settings and turn on one of the advanced settings, turn on RAW plus JPEG, and this is going to save a pair. So every time you hit the shutter, you'll get a JPEG and a DNG, compatible with whatever editing software you want to use. Um, and, and just, again, it's the, same, it's the same experience. You don't have to go into a separate mode. You don't have to make any decision with the open camera. It's the same sort of, I open camera, I press one button, and I know, I know for a fact that I got what I wanted. So you take one picture, and I'll have the raw saved for that as well. So there is one key difference relative to the rest of the industry. Our DNG is the result of aligning and merging multiple frames. So <laughs> it awesome. doesn't look like the DNG from a, a cell phone. It looks more like the DNG from uh, an SLR. Our DNG will be from 10 frames, 15 frames, 
And since the signal to noise ratio goes up as the square root of the number of frames, there's going to be a huge difference. The only thing that's been done is align and merge. And it's our robust merge, so it, if there is motion in the scene, it will do the best job it can. Right. Um, and indeed, I'm sure you've noticed that our pictures don't have ghosts in them, so it's going to be pretty clean raw. Right. So it's still using all the tile-based alignment that the JPEG that's is correct. using? So one of the most amazing things we've done this year is we've uh, taken a look at burst photography again, which you know we're using already in the camera 99% of the shots you take. Uh, and we've built a new kind of burst photography, um, which we're calling super red zoom. Now we're actually using burst photography to increase the actual resolution. So we can take pictures that resolve better than the underlying sensor might. So this is digital zoom that is uh, roughly competitive with a real 2x optical zoom. Right. And this is all using burst photography on a single camera on a smartphone handheld. Very cool. And so I, I, if I understand this correctly, this is probably relying on the small micro shifts from handheld or the optical image stabilization system and then looking Both. at interpixel detail. That's okay. correct. Both. Would you actively, does the optical image stabilization yes. system actually? Wow. Very cool. Yeah, yeah I, we can actually demonstrate the way the optical image stabilization moves very slightly. So you can actually control the level of movement to make sure you get interpixel detail? Yes. But this is handheld, so that means what we need to do is we need to be able to align it in software to sub-pixel precision. Right. And that's what we're doing. Very cool. One thing that that allows, then, is we're getting a red and a green and a blue behind every pixel just because of the way you accidentally shake the lens. Mm -hmm. We don't need to demosaic. Wow. There's no more demosaicing. Okay. We're not counting on the shift being precise. We're just counting on it uniformly distributing a bunch of samples across a pixel. Okay. We're finding the alignment oh, in software. Okay. So a lot of these techniques are old, but putting them together into a system is, uh, that can ship on a mobile phone handheld right. has been a lot of work. kind of one other place we'd like to go with Pixel is to kind of help augment you as the photographer and bring some of the, the Google intelligence and smarts in to sort of kind of back you up when you're, when you're using the camera. So this is kind of a theme, but you would use camera normally. You take out camera, stay in the normal mode, you don't have to press any buttons, switch any modes, just leave it all in the defaults, press the shutter, and if you miss by like, let's say half a second, if you miss, uh, Pixel can actually take some alternative shots for you. And if they're really, really good, it'll even, it'll even offer them to you and say, hey, I think I have a good, a good al an alternative for you. And one of the great things about these alternatives is because they're recommended by Google's intelligence, we're able to put more quality into them. So you can see that uh, we're using the same uh, uh, HDR plus tone mapping and colors. Um, and we've also bumped the resolution up a little bit. So these aren't, f these aren't 12 megapixel quality but they're high enough that you're, you're absolutely going to be able to share these and you're going to feel really proud of them. Um, and to do this, Top Shot is looking for a whole bunch of different signals. So uh, when you take a photo, it's looking at about a second and a half before and after and saying, is there a shot before and after here where maybe you were looking a little closer at the camera instead of just a little off? Or maybe your eyes were open instead of kind of half, half shut. I think you've seen photos like that. So this is really designed to help you if you, for whatever reason, just, just missed the shot, just barely. Okay, so that. I should point out that all of this is offline. All this happens when you press the shutter key. There's no, there's no server, there's no, uh, there's no data connection it needs. It's all happening on your phone. There is, however, some new technology in portrait mode as well. Um, where we used to compute stereo from the dual pixels, uh, each pixel split into two pixels, um, we are now using a learning-based pipeline. Still from the dual pixels, but it's not a conventional stereo algorithm, it's learning-based. And I think you'll find that the, uh, the results are improved. The background will be more uniformly defocused and uh, mid-distance shots where the person might be 10 feet away will look great. Those are the highlights, 
I think we showed all the, you know, some of the things I think you'll be most excited about. Um, the, there, there are some themes across all of these that I, I want to make sure uh, you know, we, we call out, which are you know, the first one is continuing to push an image quality and showing what we can do with software and hardware and zoom and low light and dynamic range and all those things. And machine learning. And <laughs> of course. Yes, that is, I mean, we could, we could talk for a long time about you know, how all these features uh, take, take advantage of the underlying hardware and, and build in machine learning, because that's the only reason we're able to do a lot of these things. Um, uh, and the other, the other theme is intelligent photography, kind of helping you take better pictures, not because it's helping you take a better shutter press, but it's helping you choose better instant. It's less about the image quality and more about the moment and the, and the, the expression uh, and that side of it. Um, and all this is about making sure that um, when you have a Pixel in your pocket, a Pixel 3, you can feel comfortable having that phone and not feeling like you need a different one, not feeling like you need a bigger camera, this will do it for you. This will do synthetic fill flash. It'll do portraits. It'll take low light photography, right? It'll take any selfie you want, whether or not you have a selfie stick with you. It's all uh, handheld, right? This is all handheld. No equipment required for any of this. Uh, and that's really what we're trying to build is a camera that doesn't require any accessories, doesn't require any, uh, any worry. It's just one, one phone, one button for the most part.